Welcome to Radio Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, and musicians, as well as some nationally recognized names. We will have movie discussions with the real dad, Mark Schumann, and learn etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass. So sit back and enjoy Radio Arts and Leisure with your hosts, Sally Sanders and Steve Coulter. Hello, I'm Steve Coulter. Welcome to HN Arts and Leisure. I'm here with Sally Sanders and our etiquette columnist, Catherine Michaels. Thank you so much for joining us, Catherine. We're, yeah, we're going to be talking about horror movies today with Halloween right around the corner in just 16 short days. We've got plenty of uh, movies to talk about in our real HN segment. So why don't we get started with our real theater picks of the week. Sally, what, what are you looking forward to seeing at the end of this month? At the end of this month, as far as Halloween movies, I'm kind of a uh, coward when it comes to Halloween movies. So I'm looking forward to seeing It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're really going for the light stuff. I'm, I'm going for the light stuff. That's about... Uh, You're not going to pop story. in uh, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho or anything like that? That's a possibility. Um, there's an awful lot on Netflix that... Uh, you can watch right now and and um, I've, I've sort of been sorting through them and and one of the things that I, I thought I would like to see is um, some of the Tim Burton films oh Tim Burton is the master yeah Nightmare Before Christmas yeah. is a great one yeah those are some good um, ones to get you ready for the uh, the corpse bride which I, I loved have you seen that one no no um, Catherine and I were talking a little bit about um, getting children into the Halloween spirit without frightening the bejesus out of them and trying to pick some films that would be less frightening for for younger kids. You're not going to bring the kids to see The Shining at the Prospector Theater on October 29th. <laughs> no, nor are we going to take them to see Halloween at the Ridgefield Playhouse <laughs> on the on. I think that's the 29th. But um, what would you suggest if you if you were going to take a say a 10 year old? The, the real movie? family pick of the week I had was Hotel Transylvania 2, which is playing at the Prospector right now. Um, I think the horror genre has gotten more familiar, familial over the years. I think it's more accessible to younger kids. You see Hollywood putting out more and more movies that are, I think, age appropriate, um, that kind of can desensitize the horror genre a little bit uh, for that, you know, 8 to 13 year old demographic. So that's one I would say definitely take the kids to. Um, but there are a lot of them, as you mentioned, on Netflix that you can uh, kind of begin to show the kids. I think one is. Uh, Oh, I was going to say Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street, but that might be a little bit uh, That's pretty too, too, flashy. That's too pretty advanced flashy. for that young demographic. But for the uh, teen demographic, Nightmare on Elm Street, I know, is on uh, Netflix. So Definitely. that's a good one to, to get you in the mood for. Blair Witch Project is another one that I know is out there. That's a wonderful one. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's that's the one where the college student film crew allegedly is, is making a, you know, a movie out in the, the dark. And the interesting scariness. part about that is it happened 15 years ago, and when it first happened, everybody thought it was real. Yes. And if it premiered uh, tomorrow, everyone would know, and within a second they'd be checking their iPhone, and they would know immediately, you know, this didn't actually happen. Yeah. When it premiered, it, it was like a documentary. And there's been a lot of different types of movies that have been like that paranormal activity was sort of shot like uh, a Realistic. documentary. Yeah. 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 And I know Danny Boyle, who we talked about last week extensively with Steve Jobs, he did 28 Days Later. That was filmed... Uh, rather uniquely for a horror movie, but I think you have one that wouldn't necessarily fit the mold for a horror movie, but one that when you saw when you were younger that stood out? Oh yeah, um, A Clockwork Orange was the most frightening movie I had ever seen it up till that point, and I still think it's one of the scariest movies you can see. Um, Is it because of the eyes when they when they make him watch the movies? or? Well, it's just the, I think that the sense of evil in that film is just so complete. And even now when I see Malcolm McDowell on the screen and yeah, he's still Alex he's DeLarge to this day. Yes, he's still, he, there's, there's still an edge that I, I feel when I see him. And um, uh, that to me was just because of the, the psychological impact of that one. I thought it was just a really good horror film. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about it that uh, Stanley Kubrick knows how to get inside your mind. He's the, yes. he's the real master when it comes to psychological thrillers. Catherine, what do you like? I know you're going to be talking about some Halloween etiquette later in the show. What do you like in terms of horror movies, or do you just stay away from this time of year? Oh, 
I not for you. Always stayed away from. Yeah. You. And I'm not sure I agree with you about desensitizing children. Yeah. You know, I think life in general will desensitize. That's them. true. So to plant terrifying images in their heads when they're little. <laughs> For me, they never leave my head. Mm -hmm. You know, Sally saying that Clockwork Orange lives with her. Yeah. The book lived, I read the book. I wouldn't see the movie because the book still lives It's in very my head. violent, yeah. And I must have been like 18. So I don't do it myself. I didn't ever do it with my kids. And you didn't take them to go see I'm Carrie not a or big something like that? I'm in, in scaring kids. Yeah. Well, fair enough. There is plenty yeah. out there in the real world to scare them that you don't need to necessarily go to the theater. But there are plenty of picks. The real home, um, as I had mentioned, I, uh, 28 Days Later, Paranormal Activity, Dawn of the Dead is one. Yeah. The original, I like that one a lot. How about Halloween? Halloween, yeah. That yeah. one's going to be in theaters. Uh, you can go see it in the real theater. Yeah, yeah, and that that is where um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis is start? the real star of the week. Uh, she's now on Scream Queens. I don't know if you've seen that or not. No, I haven't yet. Yeah. But I, 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 it sounds like an intriguing show. Have you seen it? Uh, I have. Well, I did actually get to watch an episode. The girlfriend. Uh, uh huh. You know, you got to pay your uh -huh. due diligence. <laughs> okay. But yeah, she's kind of a mainstay of this horror genre. She's every single decade. I was looking at her IMDb page. She's had a horror movie come out. She's never said no to a horror or a Halloween paycheck. I think she's done six of them. And I wonder what it is about Jamie Lee Curtis that makes her such a good horror star. She seems like such a composed and calm person, not somebody that would be screaming and running. And, and it has that long blade in Halloween. There's that image, I think we have it, where she's just holding that long blade. And that's, that's definitely one that stays with you. Um, George Romero, I just mentioned the uh, Dawn of the Dead, but Night of the Living Dead, he's kind of a mainstay director of this genre. I think those are two movies that really are kind of, you have to see those. Those are the kind of the hallmarks of the horror uh, genre, but Halloween's definitely one of them as well, I think. With Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, what do you think that she uh, does in that movie and in other movies that uh, kind of sets her apart? She has a stillness about her, even in, even in the midst of all of the, the yeah. chaos. She 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 can be so intense. I think that's that's what she brings to it. Um, I was looking at her IMDb too, and also just noticing some of the really funny movies she's been in that that uh, I've enjoyed. Um, oh, I love it. Fish Called Wanda is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, yeah, and Trading Places. She was in that, and True Lies, which is not oh my a god, wonderful they're, they're film, remaking True Lies. Which, are they? Yeah, we'll have to have a segment on uh, the four reel coming up, but uh, that that one they are remaking, sadly. Yeah. They're remaking everything nowadays, though. Well, or they're doing sequels, too. I mean, how many Nightmares on Elm Street are we up to at this point? Thirteen. No, I'm just kidding. I'm throwing out a number. I think it's five. But they've remade The Omen. They've remade... More? <laughs> We're getting cues that they... <laughs> <laughs> they've redone Carrie, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Omen. Pretty much every single 70s or 80s horror movie has been redone. Incredible. One of, one of the films that I was looking at uh, when I was researching this is The Crow. Yeah. Which had a lot of publicity at the time that it was being filmed because the star was killed in an accident on the set. I don't know if you remember I hearing about that. Yeah. Brandon Lee was the star. And it's, it's a pretty horrifying, back from the dead, revenge kind of film. But on the set, they were using a gun with alleged blanks in it and something uh, misfired. And he was killed in the filming of, this, oh my God, what a of tragedy. The Crow. Uh, the movie came out, so it, it has kind of a cult following just from the idea that everyone loved Brandon Lee. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, so that, that makes it doubly creepy. You learn something new every day, right? Uh-huh. And another one is Donnie Darko. Ooh, I love Donnie Darko. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think we'd bring that one up, but yeah, that is definitely a, uh, a Halloween-type movie. Yeah. The, the bunny rabbit with the ears. Yeah, and that's early Jake Gil Gyllenhaal, too. Yeah. So it, that, was, that was kind of a nice one. Yeah, if you don't want to go see Everest, if you're uh, afraid of that kind of stuff, you can sit at home and watch Donnie Darko and get scared a whole different way. Yeah, and how about The Lady in White? That was another one. I mean, for, for a child, that's a really scary movie, getting locked in a school at night and, and seeing... Um, Visions. That's Lucas Haas was in it. Oh yeah. Do you know that one? Um, Lucas Haas is from Witness, right? He's the kid from yes, Witness. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and he sees a, a girl being strangled in the cloakroom of the school. Of course, the ultimate horror j uh, movie from school is definitely Carrie, with yes. Sissy Spacek. Do you guys remember seeing that or no? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. In theaters or no? Uh, in theater, yeah. Mm -mm. I think yeah. on television. Now I have to ask, uh, not to keep going quickly, but you know we are, we are you know on a time clock here. Have you guys ever done a Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, screen like 
you know, watching it with the in fans. In a theater? Yeah. No, no. Have you? No, I never have. I, I kind of want to do it this year, though. Well, I've heard it's an experience. They're doing it at the um, Maritime Aquarium at their IMAX theater. The film isn't going to be an IMAX, but they're showing the film on the, the huge screen, and they're also having actors come in to reenact the play, the action, in front of the film. And everyone's to come in costume, and they'll sell props. I think that's on October 29th, but it's at the Maritime Aquarium. At the in Maritime Norwalk. Aquarium, and you can find out more about it at arts.hersamacorn.com. And obviously, Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's that's the movie of the horror genre. I feel like we we didn't mention it up until now, but it's uh, that one and Psycho. I think are Psycho, the Mount Rushmore one two of, of this yeah, genre. yeah. I think the Psycho just because of that 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 uh, shower scene and the music from that, that once you've heard it, you'll never forget. It's sort of like the, the shark in, in uh, Jaws. Right. You know, that music, boom. And of course, Alfred Hitchcock wasn't just psycho, he did The Birds, too. Another really <laughs> scary film. In case you ever... That was a totally scary film. Yeah, do so you remember when that one came out? outside and see a flock of birds. You right. want to duck and yeah. hide. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, the for real segment of today's show, Goosebumps, is coming out tomorrow. Can you believe they've made uh, R.L. Stein's collection of stories into a movie with Jack Black? It almost looks too comical for words. I I, I can't imagine it won't be ju just wonderful if, if Jack Black. Yeah, you're it. you're sold on Jack Black. I I am a great fan of Jack Black. I just think he's the best, and he'll do anything he can. Now, for me, it's like I remember reading these books, and I just think the movie looks kind of foolish, and I just can't really? believe they've turned it into a movie. But uh. I guess it will try to uh, make some money this week at the box office. I'm sure it will uh, it'll do well. Well, I, I can't say that I was devoted to the books, so I'm, I'm just going you on. You didn't read them to your kids? Uh, no. Oh, come no. on. They're great. I love them. The, I love my, them well, you know, my, ki my, my oldest kid is 40, so they may be <laughs> a little bit beyond his time. Oh, that's so. true. Okay. <laughs> there you go. We're going to head off to our first commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have a uh, boatload of this weekend's events, some horror, a uh, little mix of music, and uh, then we're going to do some Halloween etiquette with Catherine and the show. We'll be right back. Darien Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them, and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. Do you do a lot of running around but get nowhere when you're buying a car? Visit Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram for the one-stop buying experience and stop spinning your wheels. Back to school means back to busy, and Stewart's Market can save you precious time by stocking all of your favorite essentials under one roof. For a healthy start to school, we have all the ingredients. Walter Stewart's, your family-owned fresh local market, 229 Elm Street and at stewartsmarket.com. Back to school means back University, the nation's leading football training experience, is now accepting applications for its 2015 camps. Our elite faculty of NFL coaches and top professionals teach position-specific on the field and in the classroom to improve your football IQ and help you reach your full potential as a player. Apply today at footballuniversity.org. Football University, where technique plus talent beats talent alone. Healthy, confident smiles begin at Stratford Orthodontics. Conveniently located on Main Street, we are Stratford's hometown orthodontist. We offer the latest in orthodontic technology, including Damon braces and Invisalign. We always accept new patients. Call today to schedule a complimentary consultation. 203-375-8332. Stratford Orthodontics, 2499 Main Street, Stratford. 203-375-8332. And online at StraffordSmile.com. Welcome back to HAN Arts and Leisure. I'm here with Sally Sanders and Catherine Michaels. Here in segment number two, we're going to go over the weekend's events and some other things that are going to be uh, Halloween-themed and October-themed. There's plenty of going on in the area. Oh, there is, there is. Um, Richfield is, is setting up for Fall in Love with Richfield, and it should be a lovely weekend there, although a little bit chillier than we've been having. Um, 
activities start on uh, Saturday morning with the Punktober Festival at the uh, Richfield Community Center, which is at 316 Main Street, but there's going to be activities going on all along Main Street in, in town. Uh, window painting is going to be going on on Saturday and pumpkin carving. There'll be music, there'll be balloon artists, and there's going to be a chili contest at Keller Williams Realty on Saturday as well. Uh, things will be going on also on Sunday. It's a great event. I've had to promote that the last two years when I was working at the Richfield Press. At, uh, I think that was the first festival story I ever wrote. Well, the merchants the always get into it, Richfield. and, and uh, it's it's kind of gearing up for Halloween, which is huge in, in Ridgefield. Yeah. Uh, Main Street in Ridgefield is crazy on Halloween. Uh, the Stanford Museum and Nature Center is having an Oktoberfest, and that's going to be on uh, Friday night from 7 to 10. You can get uh, traditional German fare, and this is going to be outdoors, so bundle up. Uh, for more information, visit StanfordMuseum.org or call them at 203-977-6521. New Pond Farm Education Center, which is in West Reading on Marchant Road, is going to be having their Harvest Festival on Saturday, and that's from 11 to 4. Lots of activities outdoors, um, open hearth cooking, rope making, kettle corn popping. They're going to have horse-drawn wagon rides. There'll be sheep shearing. You can even buy some um, yarn from the sheep that they uh, raise there. And they'll, they'll also be selling um, cheese and, and other products from their dairy cows. No produce or anything like that, though? No apples? Um, they'll have... They'll have uh, some grapevine wreaths and... Might as well ask. It is apple yeah, season. And then yeah, they say produce. I'm not sure if they'll have apples. I, I don't know how many, how much of an orchard they have there. Anyway, admission is $5 per person or $20 maximum per family. They do not want you to bring your dog, please. And if you want more information about that, you can visit newpondfarm.org. Is there any scarecrow festivals this weekend or pumpkin way-offs? Um, or did we already miss those? We had the scarecrow festival We had festival the scarecrow festival last weekend. We have coming up um, Halloween Ooh. at the Beardsley Zoo. That'll be fun. And that starts on Saturday night. They're going to have, it's it's a kind of a, a an older child activity. They, they don't recommend it for children younger than eight because there are some fairly frightening events. Although if you bring younger children, there are activities for them and they can just kind of ignore the uh, haunted hayride and Farmer Beardsley's homestead and the ghastly greenhouse. Uh, those start at 6.30 on October 17th, that's this Saturday, and then the following weekend on Friday and Saturday, and then Friday and Saturday, October 30 and 31st. So what about costume parties? Costume parties. Well, the uh, Maritime Aquarium is uh, doing Superhero Saturday. Maritime just has it all. They do, and, and they're going the to have... The Rocky Horror Picture, they've got superheroes. Yeah, and they're, they're having Batman and Wonder Woman on Saturday visiting. And so children are invited to come in costume and meet the superheroes. And this is free with it, uh, admission to the aquarium. And you can get more information about that at maritimeaquarium.org or call 203-852-0700. The Maritime Aquarium is at 10 North Water Street in South Norwalk. I wonder if they're going to have uh, Batman feed the seals. Oh. You know what would be really cool is if they had him as the diver. Remember when they did the Santa yeah. Claus diver in the shark tank? Let him go in there. That would be yeah. highly entertaining. Yeah. I'd go to see that. And <laughs> here's one of my favorite Halloween events. I think this is just so much fun. Pipe screams. In Bridgeport, the Greater Bridgeport Organist Guild is going to present a concert where they use the um, pipe organ at the United Congregational Church uh, on Park Avenue. And it's a, a massive pipe organ, so you get wonderful fugues and and creepy organ music plus they're going to have singers and um, musicians and they're going to show a 1920 silent film all in one concert with the music of course with in the, the music from from the uh, organ that's um, Sunday at 4 at the United Congregational Church 877 Park Avenue tickets are ten dollars or five for students and you can make reservations at Bridgeport AGO dot org or call 203 Three three five three one zero seven, and I have one final one, which is vampires in Connecticut. Yeah, we haven't mentioned anything about vampires in this show yet. Well, um, nothing about Dracula. Nick, he would, he'd be upset. Nick Bellantoni, who's the uh, 
emeritus state archaeologist and has done a lot of digging around in cemeteries in Connecticut, is going to be talking at the Kellogg Environmental Center, which is at 500 Hawthorne Avenue in Derby on Tuesday, October 20th. And he's going to be talking about vampires in Connecticut, which was a real phenomenon. Um, you can tell by, by the, the way the bones were disturbed in the graves whether or not there was some activity in which people thought that there were vampires in their towns. Oh. So to register for this, they ask you to call 203-734-2513 or email donna.kingston at ctgov. Uh, space is limited, so they do ask for reservations. And finally, this has nothing to do with Halloween in particular, but the circus is coming to Bridgeport's Webster Bank Arena on October 22nd, and it will be running through Sunday, October 25th. So if you're not in the mood for getting scared, you can go to see you Legends can go see the circus. at Webster Arena. Okay, and but you what if you something. want what if you want to win a drone this Halloween? How can you do that? Well, Steve, how can you do that? Well, you're going to enter the HAN Network's Fast Frights Horror Movie Contest. Okay. You're going to dig up your best original horror story and film your fright for a chance of winning a DJ a DJI Phantom 3 drone. Enter at fastfrights.com and there's also more details at the website. The grand uh, prize sponsor for that is Milford Photo. And again, the movie uh, submission deadline is October 30th, HAN Network Fast Frights con uh, Contest. You get to win a drone. Catherine, are you interested or no? I have a drone. Oh, you have one already. <laughs> so you're not going to be entering a, a frightening not. film? Somebody else have all right. A chance, well, we yeah. highly encourage all of our listeners and how These are short films, right? These short films, of yeah, course. Yeah, you're not going to do. Uh, three minutes. Yeah, you're not going to enter Godfather Part 2 into here. Oh, shucks. And yeah, and the winning submission will be announced uh, November 13th. The deadline again, October 30th. The day before Halloween, that's a Friday. Three minute short films, fastfrights.com for more details. We're going to head off to our uh, second commercial break. When we come back, we'll have some Halloween etiquette with Catherine Michaels. Okay. Here at the Darien Sports Shop, we are very excited about our newly redesigned men's department. Gentlemen, if you're shopping for work, weekend, or wedding, we've got the latest styles and trends inside our spacious new department just for you. We have vast selections from Peter Millar, Vineyard Vines, Johnny O, Duckhead, Barber, and so much more. And you can even walk out of the store in the new Wolverine 1000 Mile Men's Boot. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. Does buying a car leave you feeling like you're chasing your tail? Head straight to Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram and take car buying in a whole new direction. While the temperatures are cooling down, the fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait that are abundant in the Long Island Sound. If you love the New England coast during autumn, this is the time to be on the water. The latest from Shimano, Quantum, Avet, Hoagie, Phase 2 and more are in stock and ready to go at the dock shop. And don't mind those fall breezes with jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece from Grundens and Stormer. The dock shop will keep you warm and dry. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, docshop.com. Welcome back to HAN, HAN's Arts and Leisure. Catherine Michaels 
We've been waiting for this for a long time. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. We've been in desperate need for some good etiquette advice, and with Halloween coming right around the corner, I think it's the perfect time to ask you some very important questions about how to perform this Halloween season. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start out with the first question we have, which is, we've always had Halloween parties or gone to them, but this year my children want to go trick-or-treating. And how do, you, how do I prepare them for this? We're going to be going with them, but they will be going to people's stores by themselves. Oh, this is the perfect time to remind them about the manners um, that you've been teaching them all along. When they get to somebody's house, they don't pound on the door, you know, ring a doorbell once or knock once, say trick or treat. Um, when they're given a treat, say thank you. If somebody compliments them on their costume, say thank you. Um, and after they receive the treat and they're leaving, just say happy Halloween. Um, remind them not to push or shove. If a treat is offered, instead of being given to them, to take one and one only, <laughs> to let little kids go first, and last, not to trample on people's grass and chrysanthemums in their race to get to the next house. Good. Kids can do that on Halloween. They get overly excited and they, they can't control can. themselves. Yeah. What about parents that are not going to be around? They're going to be out of town and there's nothing they can do about that. Uh, how do they make it clear that they're not home? Just turn off all their lights or have a scary oh, figure yeah. that scares off the kids or, or what? Parent or not, any anybody who is in a house where there's a neighborhood that's trick-or-treating, the universal um, uh, indication that you're not there to turn hand Turn off out your lights. <laughs> is turn off your lights. Okay, yeah. You're not going to leave them on. <laughs> well, unless you really, really want to provide treats, in which case you can put treats in a basket and leave it on your front steps. Right. With a For the next says, child who comes by to <laughs> Happy load Halloween. up. You can say, please take only one. Um, and that way you're still participating if you want to, even when you can't be there. It is tough not to participate in Halloween. You kind of just feel yeah. like a kid coming up to your door and not getting any candy, even though you're not there. It, it kind of hurts. And it's, it's so much fun to see them. It's really sad when you can't be home for that. Right. It is fun. So, um, this is another question we have. Um, hordes of older kids trick-or-treating. Mm. And, and um, this person asks, uh, last Halloween, a lot of older teens were trick-or-treating. I, I think they were too old for this. Is it OK to give them treats so there's, or not give them treats so there's enough for the younger children? Mm. There's really no cutoff age for trick-or-treating. Usually, kids stop by about the time they're 14. But if older kids come to your door, they, and they have a costume, they show that they've tried a little bit. <laughs> There's no reason not to give them a treat and realize that they're just celebrating the, the spirit, you know, the spirit of the season. Also, because little kids tend to go out very, very early. They often start like at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. Yeah, they do now. bedtime is 6.30. The older kids come later, you're not gonna run out of candy for the, for the little ones. No, and it's, it's nice to give the older kids uh, candy so they won't egg your house or your car. <laughs> oh, I hate <laughs> when they're like part, that. Yeah. <laughs> what about decorations? This one came from one of our readers. We had a question about uh, what's too scary? Uh, vampires, ghouls? Uh, in terms of decorations, skeletons, are they perfect? Or what would you say is the best kind of decoration for your house, especially if you have one of those older kids that are no longer going out yeah, trick-or-treating? Yeah, I think you stay away from blood and gore and Spurting uh, blood, fake most importantly. limbs and loose eyeballs, uh, yeah. you know, things like that. A hanging skeleton, a ghost is probably OK. It's just important to remember that little children really do become genuinely frightened. And the goal of Thanksgiving, or Halloween, <laughs> is not to frighten them. It's to help them celebrate their little happiness and, and trick-or-treating and being maybe a little scared, but not yeah, too scared. Make sure they're safe above all else. That's right. Well, just being out in the dark is, is scary enough, I think, for the small ones. They, they find that really challenging. And going into people's houses that they don't know. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, you see the little ones being so shy about it. So just to review, no eyeballs, no toes, <laughs> right. no loose limbs, body parts, well, we do. any of that sort. I have, to, I have to confess yeah. that in, in our um, Halloween, we always have a hand in the, in the bucket of candy. And it's one of those battery-powered hands oh, that moves. just sits there and moves. And, and the, the, the kids react once it to gets it very one, well. Once it gets one kid, it's like everybody Yeah, then they're like, go to the house with the hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then they come back. They know which one's yours. Yeah. So here's a, here's a question that, that um, is about something that's fairly new. 
which is, I read about an organization that is recommending that everyone paint a pumpkin the color teal and put it out to show that they aren't handing out food items to protect kids with food allergies. I certainly don't want to be responsible for making a child ill, but the alternatives like stickers and glow bracelets and miniature slinkies are out of my budget range for a hundred or so trick-or-treaters that we get. Should I avoid buying candy that contains peanuts, tree nuts, milk, eggs, wheat, and so forth to protect allergic ghosts and goblins, or is it better just not to hand out anything? Well, first, the Teal Pumpkin Project, which is great, um, is promoted by the Food Allergy Research and Education Organization to promote inclusiveness so that a child who has an allergy can participate in Halloween as fully as one who doesn't have an allergy. So it's a nice idea, but it's a hard thing to accomplish. If, if your budget, you know, for affordability or accessibility or whatever to alternatives to food, is too expensive and it often yeah. is and can be if you get a lot of trick-or-treaters and keep in mind too that even those items can have allergens they can have latex which is a huge allergy for some children right um, some moldable clay has wheat in it so I you know it's a hard thing <coughs> to figure out so your choices are say this is too much I'm just not doing it um, it's to participate just as you always would and keep in mind that children as young as three who have food allergies know they have them and they do not they really don't they don't eat things without checking with their parents and that parents of children with allergies parents with children period have been checking their trick-or-treat bags for decades now back to the days when somebody put a razor blade in an apple right. you know, to hurt a child. So parents of children with allergies are certainly checking what they have. And so it's not to think days or wear your costume to work day, et cetera. Are there any guidelines for this? Any etiquette that people should follow as Halloween uh, kind of comes closer? From Frozen or do some huge elaborate costume, you could wear a big wig and just say you're a bad hair day. You know, you can just something, uh, a headband with a pumpkin on it, just something just to show that you're participating. But there are a lot of don'ts, and the first one is don't go as your boss. <laughs> oh, come on, I thought that, I think that would be funny. He or she would not think it was funny, and that right. could be problematical. Um, try to avoid current day political figures because that's a little volatile. Yeah, yes. that could be a really hit you or can miss. Be And how could you choose amongst all of them anyway? It would be difficult. So, You're no right. Trump, really? No I feel like Trump's going to be the most popular <laughs> Halloween costume. I'm it calling might. it now, by the way. <laughs> okay, I most think Most people will be, will be Donald yeah. Trump this year, I guarantee it. Um, you don't actually terrify people. Even adults can get terrified, so you don't do that in your workplace all day long either. Um, so remember if you're Jack your Nicholson from The Shining, don't bring in a real. It's really not a good thing. The box is covered in aluminum foil. I couldn't type. You couldn't type. Yeah. So that It'd would be, be a very unproductive work day. It would. Or if you were in a you know princess costume with layers and layers of tulle, that would be hard for you to type yes. too. But otherwise, you know, I guess it can be fun. But you should participate. <laughs> Catherine's like, I guess okay. it could be fun if you're not dressing up at all. Well, I will drag up my witch's hat. That will be good. Okay. Yeah, the witch's hat. That's perfect. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Catherine, as always, thank you so much for coming in and doing the etiquette with us. We've missed you. Thank you. It's I a lot of fun. You. Yeah. And everybody out there, uh, have a safe Halloween. We'll be back next Thursday talking more We'll movies. have more Halloween Yeah, next more week. Halloween next week. Uh, I'm Steve Coulter. This is Sally Sanders and Catherine Michael signing off. Everybody have a great weekend.